said, okay, good. You go run your little department over there. Get out of mine. I'll be just fine. Well, the end of that story, which was so great, is that we did put this great system of honesty in place. We sold more cars than anybody else in the nation for a year and a half. So 18 straight months would be an 18 sentence new records, 18 number ones, not bad, you know, because we were doing straight up work and everybody knew they came here, this is what it was, this is what you're doing, this is how much it is. I had the highest accident in life, credit life, percentage of anyone in the industry. I also had more people do contracts with me on my banks. And you know why? Try this one on for size. I would do what was called spot delivery, on-the-spot delivery, which is now very normal. I understand that I was a pioneer in that. But what happened was now you go to a lot, you find your car, they do the paperwork, and you drive your car home. And then they'll call you and, and, you know, and say, okay, your loan's approved, this is good, the whole bit, or loan's not approved, we need more money or whatever, bring your car back, da-da. Well, when I started that in the mid-'80s, my philosophy was, well, how do I get them to do this? Well, I made a simple form that said, your loan is not approved. I'm allowing you to drive this car for X number of hours with no obligation until the loan is approved. At that point, your loan is completely done, firm, your signatures are valid, and away we go. And here's where they thought they would have an interesting time. I gave them 72 hours to go get other financing. Because everybody always says, well, I'm going to my credit union. <laughs> my credit union or my bank will do a better job. Yeah, I found that to be true. That's why I gave them 72 hours, because I gave them enough time. Guess what they didn't do? <laughs> why? They're already done. I don't want to go to the bank. It's too big of a hassle. I don't have to stand in line, wait, get a number, do all these different things. So in 72 hours, I just processed the contract, and away we went. I would have people call me and say, hey, I got my financing, and I'd say, oh, no, no, but 72 hours is not a week and a half. <laughs> you know, what do you mean? And I'd say, ah, wait a minute. And I would remember, and they'd go, oh, yeah. So what happens? Well, you can have your bank pay off my bank, but you have an official note right now with Frost Bank or whatever the bank was. So it goes back to the honor system. You know, in the Boy Scouts, what do they teach you? Girl Scouts, what do they teach you? Be honest. Be prepared. I love that. Be prepared. Do the Girl Scouts, how do, does anyone here ever a Girl Scout? Does this used to be the Boy Scout thing. That's the Girl Scout. Is it the Girl well, Scout? They come up like this. Yeah. This way. Yeah. So the Boy Scouts are this way, and the Girl Scouts are this way. Ah. See, I didn't know that. Interesting. Cool. Well, we'll have to remember that for down the road. But you know, that's part of like a little oath they take. I love the one that says, I promise to. And you make all of these promises. Every politician that gets sworn in has to take an oath. <laughs> <laughs> what about the doctor? Does that do no harm? <laughs> that, and it's my job as a doctor to ensure the health of anyone in front of me, not just my patient, regardless of their ability to pay. What do they call it? The hypocritic oath? Hypocritical. <laughs> yeah. Wonder how close that is to another word, right? I was going to say, I think they, they misunderstood the word. Yeah. So, but you, you get that point of how much fun that is to look at it that way. Now, taking just a moment, are there any examples that y'all would like to share with us about things that just didn't set right with you? I, uh, well, when I had this heart thing, when I first went in to the main cardiologist, I swear it seemed like he was adding up dollar signs in his head because he kept saying, oh, we're going to get that checked. Oh, well, do you know if I need that checked yet? Well, yeah, you need, an, you need a heart monitor for a day, you need this EKG, you need this uh, blood test, you need all this stuff. Well, are you thinking about this first before you're telling me this? Because you're saying it really fast yeah. and it doesn't seem, all you see is like my insurance going crazy in your head right now. So that's, that's my most recent experience. So. Okay. Is there anything else? <coughs> yes. I almost got shot with a double barrel shotgun because my husband, ex-husband, doctor, was trying to figure out what was wrong with my husband. They was giving him all these something to sleep and something for his nervousness and something for his stress and something for and didn't bother to read 
about the medicine, and two of the medicines that you gave them didn't react very well together. Mm -hmm. So about 11.30 on a Friday night, my husband just went wacko and pulled out the double barrel shotgun and had it in my chest. And wow. I had, actually had to call his mom to come and get him, you know, calm him down and, and because they all they saw was the dollar signs. You know? yep. The prescription companies pay them to push it on you and that's okay if you know how to push it and who to push it to, but when you're just pushing it not even knowing that, the, I mean, we actually got one of the PDRs, the prescription, and, and looked and two of the medicines that he was on did not react very well together and put him in that wacko stage. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and yes. Well, I was just going to tell a story Come about on. about being forthright. Um, and uh, last year, one of my dogs died, and I had to take. Well, she was sick. Took her to the vet, and and the the vet uh, gave me two columns. She, she printed out a piece of paper. There were uh, two choices for me to make. She listed every test that was that she thought might be needed, and she let me choose which test to the, that I wanted her to conduct on on Bridget. And she explained each one, what the purpose of each one was, and what the price was going to be, and told the prices for me as we talked about it. Uh, and that was very forthright and honest, and I really appreciated that. That was it was an awful time because Bridget ended up dying. We had to put her to sleep, but uh, I really appreciated the way she was forthright and honest about the prices and what each test did. Well, you know, I, I'm just I'm going to reiterate what you just said to make sure everybody heard. Here's a situation to where you're you're in a bad situation anyhow. You have a pet, a family pet that you've had. You're having to deal with the potential loss of the pet. And the veterinarian did the right thing, in my opinion. They sat down with the person and they laid out, this is where we are. See, they're not hiding anything. They weren't doing the shortcut. They weren't trying to just to get you to do something. So they laid it out, and then I love what you said. It, it made us feel better about our decisions because now I knew the facts. And isn't it true that if you have the knowledge, if somebody gives you the information, you're really capable of making a great decision all by yourself in most cases mm -hmm. as adults that have been in the business. So it always amazes me is why a salesperson, and we, all of us are salespeople, why we don't want to give them the information. It's like we want to be slick. You know, I taught sales. I've taught sales training since 1976 professionally. And I never taught how to be slick. You know, mine, the thing that I always started with was, how about this one? Spend time talking to the potential client, asking questions so you know what to offer them. Exactly. I always like the one that comes in and they just tell you what you're going to buy. I don't want that. Take time. You know, we'll roll back around to the car business because all of us have been there. Everybody's been on a car lot at least once in their life. How's that normally work? Hi, may I help you? No, I'm just looking. Right? And they ignore that. And, they and, and then they do it. ignore it. And the reason they ignore it is you don't know what you're saying. Because you went to the school of how to buy cars. And the first thing you're told is, no, I'm just looking. And the car salesman, if we as car salesmen took that and walked away, there would never be a car sold in the world. So it's whether you like it or not, I'm there, I get paid only to sell cars, so I am hooking on to you and find out if you're a good deal or not. Furthermore, you can't buy a car unless you can get in it. You certainly shouldn't buy one unless you drive it. And you probably really don't know what you want, you think you do. Because most of the time, are you ready? You're en route to the movie, and you've got 45 minutes to kill, so let's go walk around the car lot and waste these guys and girls time. <laughs> so, no, I like the laughing, this is kind of nice. So you all have heard of this technique before. But the car lot's supposed Done to it. be closed. <laughs> it's supposed to be closed, they're not supposed to talk to me, and it's a great way to walk my meal off so I can sit in the movie. And who does this person think they are wanting to show me a car because I'm on a car lot? <laughs> kind of crazy. It'd be like walking into a state farm agency and going, Hi, can I get a cheeseburger? <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> yeah, the agent, I think the agent might go, 
First off, I don't think you're qualified to be here. <laughs> Do you really want a cheeseburger? And if so, life insurance policy because you know they're going to. Well, they can't pass the mental section of it. This is the. Oh, that's so bad. Oh.